Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the strange and unusual literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a book that I read, one that is about uh, imaginary kingdoms and friendship. I am referring to Bridge to Terabithia by Catherine Patterson, which was published in 1977. For those who don't know, Catherine Patterson is an American author, uh, having written since the 1960s, uh, and I believe uh, she's still writing somewhat. Uh, Her last uh, thing that that she had written seems to have been published uh, around 2017, So I don't know if she's still writing or if she just decided to stop, but uh, she has been quite active over the years. Uh, She's written um, uh, books like Bridge to Terabithia, which is seen as a uh, bit of a classic of young adult literature. Uh, but she's also written other stories about China or Japan. Uh, she she spent a lot of time in her youth uh, in China before her parents had to move at the start of World War II, uh, and that's kind of reflected in the in the in the stories that she's she's written. Um, and she's won a number of awards for it, including the Newbery, uh, which is why I'm talking about this book right here. Uh, as I am a big fan of the Newbery Award, I do think it is a, an indicator of quality to some extent. Uh, and um, I, I just want to go through the Newberries and, and talk about you know what I what I found not only with the winners but also the um, the nominees because uh, I think you can find out a lot about young adult literature. Uh, based upon that. Uh, yeah, and so Ka- like Catherine Patterson seems to be a very interesting author uh, and has had some of her work turned into uh, movies. As a result, this one is seen as a, uh, you know, a mid-2000s classic as well. Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about this book. I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So Bridge to Terabithia focuses on Jesse Aarons. He is a middle school boy from a uh, rural household. The household is pretty busy. His father has to travel to Washington, D.C. for work, and he's growing up with a lot of sisters, so there's not really a lot of time for him to focus on himself. And he he has a kind of a a weird relationship with his father because his father doesn't really seem to know how 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 to deal with him. Uh, so Jesse spends a lot of time on his own. Uh, he enjoys running, and he's determined to prove himself the fastest boy in, uh, in the school that he's going to uh, once school starts in the fall. Uh, but in the meantime, he runs into a, a young girl named Leslie Burke. Uh, Leslie uh, is a bit of a tomboy, uh, isn't really that fond of her parents since they made her move to this rural area. Uh, but she does seem to like Jesse, although Jesse doesn't give her the time of day at first because... Uh, because he just thinks she's pretty unusual. However, on the first day of school, all the boys gather to prove who is the fastest, and um, uh, uh, like like Jesse finds that he's he's somewhat faster than the other boys. But then Les- Leslie uh, asks to participate, and uh, like. Um, the boys are like, we don't want to do that, but Jesse calls them chicken if they don't, and that uh, that gets them to allow her to, to do it. And it turns out that Leslie is even faster than Jesse, uh, and it, uh, like he comes in second place, which upsets a lot of the other boys, and they no longer want to participate. But Jesse develops a, a, a stronger friendship at this point with Leslie, hanging out with her quite a bit, and eventually in the middle of the woods, forming the kingdom, the the imaginary kingdom of Terabithia. They have like an imaginary castle and they make up rules and they eventually get a dog named uh, Prince Terrier who, uh, Prince Terrian, who um, like just guards over this, uh, this, this kingdom and they have a great time, uh, mostly staying friends, although their, their family uh, suggests that they might be in a, in a romantic relationship, although Jesse doesn't really care for that for that kind of thing. Jesse and Leslie work together to uh, help Jesse's sister uh, sort of um, pull one over on a on a bully, although they later find out that that bully is being abused by their their parents. Uh, and um, uh, like 
like Jesse and, and Leslie grow even closer as a result of all of this. Uh, one day, Jesse goes to the National Gallery Art, sort of an art museum with a teacher, and has a grand old time. But from there, the rest of the story takes place. And I'm not going to get into spoilers in the summary section here. So I definitely encourage you to go read this if you haven't done so already, and come back afterwards so that we can uh, have a a kind of spoilery uh, d discussion in the in the analysis section. In terms of analysis, there is a little bit worth talking about with Bridge to Terabithia. It's a pretty short story, but there are some uh, key ideas that Catherine Patterson seems to be talking about here. The first idea is that of friendship. This entire story is centered around the growing friendship between Jess and, and, and Leslie. Uh, they, they both seem to be what the other needs at, at this point in their lives. For Leslie, Jessie is kind of an escape from her, from her weird sort of, uh, uh, her parents who are trying to get away from urban life and, uh, are getting back to the farm lifestyle, a return to the pastoral, if you will. Uh, and, and they're, they're say they're, they say they're doing it for Leslie, but Leslie doesn't really care much for it. And so she, she can escape from these parents and, and just hang out with Jesse, who is very kind and uh, treats her very well, unlike the kids at school who treat her kind of like 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 an outcast of sorts. Uh, and and Jesse's just there for her in that way. Uh, and for uh, for Jess, like Leslie presents uh, uh, a way for him to find himself and 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 find a space of his own. Uh, like he he lives with so many sisters and but and he doesn't really get to have a chance for his say in matters. But with hanging out with Leslie, he gets more of a of a role and he gets to find who he is. He has a bit of a difficult relationship with his father, but none of that matters when he's with when when he's with Leslie. And she has her and him against against the world, uh, so to speak. And uh, it's it's a very fun friendship that that develops over the course of the story. Uh, uh, allow me to read you an interesting quote from this. He thought about it all day. How before Leslie came, he had been a nothing, a stupid, weird little kid who drew funny pictures and chased around a cow field trying to act big, trying to hide a whole mob of foolish little fears running riot inside his gut. I feel that quote is interesting for multiple ways. It's, it's, it's happening after Jess learns that, spoilers, Leslie has, has died. Uh, and he's thinking about what her friendship meant to him. Uh, noting that he, like, he was dealing with a lot of fears, a lot of pressure, a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, uh, sort of ostracized by the, the other kids at school. And so Leslie, uh, was something different. She helped make, make him more courageous. She helped him see that the, what the other kids believe doesn't matter. It only matters what, uh, about Jess and, and, and Leslie, which is, which is very beautiful. But that quote is also interesting because, uh, like, like th through this death, you see how deeply Jess cares. And like, as I was reading this story, I, I was like, wow, this, this friendship seems interesting, but I don't know if Catherine Patterson does a great job of describing it. But as I got to the end, as I got to the death, I, I started crying because I, I, I realized like through this death, you see how deep this friendship went. Uh, like you, you see the events throughout the story and how they're forming this this kingdom, and you see like like at one point Jess is like I gotta get Leslie something for Christmas, and it doesn't really seem that apparent until you get to the end when it when it all comes back and you're faced with the the enormity of this of this sort of friendship and how much it mattered to Jess and how much it probably mattered to Leslie and how they don't have each other anymore and how Jess kind of needed her in that in that moment. Uh, but I'll still have the memory of her, which is which is very beautiful. Uh, and of course, you could ask the question like, is there something more here? Is there uh, like a, a relationship forming, a romantic relationship? And I do think the answer is yes, but I also think it's the wrong question to ask about this story. It's much more important to focus on the friendship that's forming. Uh, and how, you know, sometimes young boys and girls can have like platonic, deeply entrenched uh, friendships that, that, that help them find who they are and, and are pivotal, at, especially at this, this moment in their life when they're entering adolescence.
Another idea that Patterson is talking about here is that of a space of one's own, like a personal space of, of, of sorts. Terabithia is a personal hideaway for Jess. It, it, it represents something that him, as well as, as Leslie, like don't really have in their everyday life because Leslie feels that she's being smothered by her parents in a way, and, and Jess feels that uh, there's no room really in his household. Like the all the girls and, and the fact that his dad doesn't really understand him he feels like he's a bit of an a bit of an outcast so with terabithia uh in this this imaginary kingdom that they created they they've created an opportunity to find themselves in a way that doesn't happen at school or at home uh it's it's something that uh i think a lot of people are familiar with because uh when you're a child you have this grand imagination that you might lose as you get older uh, but like with that imagination, it helps you find yourself. It helps you deal with, with some of the stressors that you may be dealing in your, your everyday life. And I, I really like how Catherine Patterson gets at that. Like she, she wrote, she, uh, like it, it makes sense that she might do that. Cause she did talk to her son about it. Cause this is based on her child's life, uh, where he lost a friend of his after she was struck by lightning. So it, it does seem like he, she kind of leaned heavily into that sort of, um, uh, kind of real story to find these elements of friendship and like finding your own personal space in the world. Patterson also talks about a number of other ideas, including that of the father-son relationship um, between Jess and, and his father. Uh, it's it's very it's a it's a bit of a struggle. Um, like it's clear that Jess's dad is trying, but he doesn't really know how to connect to his son, and things just keep going wrong. But at the end, like after uh, Leslie dies, like his father is really the only one who can at least try to console him. Uh, I, I do think that um, Patterson could have done more work here and in, in developing this this sort of relationship and seeing where it's coming from and and other aspects of it. But uh, she does an okay job here. Uh, she's again, she's also talking about imagination, especially with that idea of the space of one's own. I think she does a really good job of uh, of, of of showing how grand imagination can be. Uh, and then she's also talking somewhat of gender, uh, kind of noting how um, Leslie is a bit of a tomboy and people expect her to be different, especially in a rural area. And there's also a mention like, oh, Jess isn't allowed to cry because he's a boy. Like, but there's also an expectation that he has to feel like what he's feeling and that if he doesn't show any emotion, he's a monster. And I, I, I do think Patterson is like trying to get at something here that uh, she doesn't take enough time to get there. But it is, there's like a, a forming of a, of, a, of a major kind of rele relevatory theme um, at the heart of this story. Of course, my, my major issue with this story is it does feel like a lot, a lot of plot elements are sort of dropped rather quickly. Uh, for example, the bully Janice, like she gets her comeuppance in the story, but we, we then find that her parents are abusing her. And uh, like, there's never anything really done about, about that plot element. It's just kind of mentioned and then moved on. Uh, there's the struggle between or, or with Jesse and, and his father, which is somewhat developed, but not as well as it as it could have been. And then a number of other ideas, uh, such as like Jesse not really liking Leslie's dad, and that's not really exp uh, like expounded upon. It, it, it just kind of mentioned. And I feel like this the short nature of the story. It's 126 pages, kind of. Uh, relates to that issue in, in, a, in a way like uh, if Patterson had um, extended the story or like built upon the ideas within it you could have had an even more solid uh, young adult story than 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 she has right here and there's a couple other things to talk about as well for example this is a Newberry Medal winner do I think that it deserves the Newberry Medal winner I think it has a lot of potential uh, but um, it's 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 not as solid as it as it could be again that it feels like there's a lot of plot elements that are dropped. Uh, but the way that uh, Patterson talks about death, the way that Patterson, you know, talks about Jess's like desire to find a space of one his own and creates the fictional kingdom of Terabithia. Like I, I do think that's worthy of uh, uh, to some degree of this this award. I just feel like it's it, the the sum of its parts aren't don't quite hold up. Uh, it's also worth noting that this book is has been banned in a number of uh, a number of areas uh, because of its content. It talks about death pretty heavily, um, but also it's been accused of of promoting Satanism and and other types of religion. 
um, I think through the kingdom of Terabithia itself. Uh, but really, I think it's because uh, there's a suggestion that God doesn't damn people to hell. Uh, because Leslie wasn't really a church-going girl, uh, there was this worry that Leslie might, might be going to hell. But one of the characters says that like, God wouldn't do that. God, like, she's going to go to heaven or something like that. Kind of challenging what people think about God and whatnot. And as for the talk of death, I feel that's very necessary to, to talk to with, with, with children. You can't, just, you can't just not tell them about it. And then like when they're 16, someone important to them dies and they have to struggle to, to really understand these things. You should present young adults with literature that tells them about how the world works. And this, this to some extent does that. So I understand why it's banned. I don't necessarily agree with that. And I do encourage people to seek it out because it is banned, because of course, course, you know, banned books are, are banned largely because of the, the radical or um, sort of out of the out of the usual ideas that they present. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Bridge to Terabithia by Katherine Patterson, a, a pretty fun uh, young adult story, uh, one that I, I had sort of read in um, in a middle school, but I, I don't think I ever finished it, but I had seen the, the movie, so I knew what to expect. That said, the ending did hit me pretty hard. <laughs> uh, um, like, even though I knew that Leslie died, I didn't realize it was going to hurt as much as it did, and I think that's uh, some indicator of the quality of the writing of the friendship at large on Patterson's part. So I, yeah, I do recommend that you go check it out. Uh, if you have anything to say about my review or you just want to comment on the book, do so in the comments below. Let's have a discussion about Bridge to Terabithia. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and possibly join the Discord if you want to continue having a conversation, or so that other people can find out about this book or this author if they don't already know. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and imaginary world-building travels. Farewell.